Put up. Put a fifth round in that clock. Put a shot when you drive in the top. I put your button now, I can't stop. What's good with you guys, man? I'm back with another YouTube video today. And um, today we got another, we got part two to the Chris Watts video. In the last video, I said that there was only one more part. I was wrong. It's three parts. And this is obviously the second video. So there's one more video coming. Um, I've tried to not keep you guys waiting with these and dropping them back to back to back. So um, that's what I'm going to do. Because, I, I, you know, when YouTubers fucking make parted things, they like... Um, you know, they separate it and they have you waiting for it. I'm not going to do that to y'all. I know you guys want to see this, so I'm going to give it to you. And um, without further... Well, hold on, wait. Um, these videos are pretty long. Like, as you guys can see, this video is 24 minutes. Um, I'm, I'm going to try not to talk that much. And plus, it's not really much to talk about. A lot of these videos are just, like, the obvious. Like, you can tell the motherfucker's lying or not. So, yeah. Without further ado, let's get into this video. I gotta find him, right? I need your help. When we find the guy who took him, what do you think we should do? This is what is known as a behavior-provoking question. An innocent person will usually give what is known as a draconian response. They will immediately respond with the harshest sentence possible for the crime they are falsely being accused of committing. A deceptive individual will often give an equivocating response. This means that they will fragmentize and divert from the question to a certain degree as a means to avoid responding to the query in its entirety. They're gonna come home safe, correct? When you find the guy. When we find the guy, they're going to come home. Life in prison would be the... That's what I would, that's what I would think with two kids that are involved. What if he hurt them? Did they stop? Did, did, I'm not sure if like, that penalty is even... Use, is it used in Colorado? I'm not even sure what is the death penalty. Okay. Um, I mean, like, if these kids are not alive, like, there's no, there's nothing you could do to, to cope with that, to make me cope with that, if those kids are not okay. Can can we keep talking about some complicated things? Sure. Some things that are going to make you uncomfortable. No, that's fine. Okay. You've done very good in talking to me about this really hard conversation you guys had, okay? Very good. That's sometimes hard. And I understand why sometimes someone in your position says, uh, doesn't want to tell me about that. Because please go help me find my kids and you don't need to know about my, my marriage argument, okay? So I gotta say, you've done very good at that. Um, and I need you to keep doing that. So I need to ask you about um, your marriage and uh, infidelity. Okay. Okay. Tell me about it. Yeah, I have never cheated on my wife. Okay. And I fully suspect she has never done that to me. Oh, okay. The interrogator was already aware that Chris was cheating on his wife with a woman by the name of Nicole Kessinger. He had handed over his phone earlier on this interview for what he thought was for the purpose of going through his and his wife's mutual contacts to look for potential suspects. Judging by Chris's bold-faced denial, it's safe to assume he deleted all of his correspondence with Nicole beforehand, yet he was most likely unaware that the FBI have programs that can recover every single piece of digital exchange sent from a device even long after it's deleted. Highly trained investigator. Yo, that's fucking crazy. Even though it's 2021, they probably figured that shit out in like 2012 or something. But that, hey, obviously I don't need to say this, but shit, don't do no crimes, motherfucker, because you're done. <laughs> you are done. Basically, if they, if they saw your phone right now and you'd had your phone for five years, they could literally find literally see every single text message sent from that phone even if you blocked that person three years ago that's crazy as hell you get her over here right i see pictures of you from a few years ago mm -hmm. and i see you standing before me now okay okay, okay. you've gotten pretty fit yeah. okay 
you can imagine when guys start cheating or want to cheat, that's what happens. Yes. So tell me about it. So I did not cheat on my wife. Okay. What do I do to help you walk out of this room and not look like the person who's responsible? You have to trust me. I had nothing to do with these with this, with this act of like evil cruelty, whatever has happened here. Because my love for these two girls and my wife, like I don't want anything to happen to them. I've never wanted anything to happen to them. You ever y'all notice that he has never referred to them as his daughters or like his kids? He keep on saying those kids and these girls. Like, no, bro, they are your capital your those are your kids that you did this to no matter if about me and my wife separate or not or divorce or anything i never wish harm on anybody on a human being in general okay like just seeing that picture like i need them i, I want them just to run through that front door and just grab me mm -hmm. or just barrel just tackle me knock me to the floor bust my head up, i don't care the amount of love I have for my family is expensive. Bro, I cannot be a detective. I can't just sit there and let somebody lie to me to my face and just continue to like keep a straight face or just act like nothing's wrong. Like if I know you lying, I'm gonna like at least make a face like mm -hmm, okay, bro, like whatever. You know, what you that's why I'm not a detective. And I it's never gonna die. Okay. And they need I want them back. Okay. I have to have them back. When you walk out of this room, there's nothing I can say to a room full of police officers that's going to convince them that you have nothing to do with this. I know. You know what they think. I, I know what all that call it. Yeah. Here's a guy who didn't call 911, who woke his wife up at a ridiculous hour because he was so guilty about something that he had to get it off his chest and say, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving you. That didn't go well. Okay, so what happened? She told me she wanted me to wake her up before I left. That's why I didn't just wake her up, like, just to tell her this. Like, I woke her up. That's what she wanted to do, and we talked. Like, usually at 4 a.m., I wake up, I go down and work out. This day, I wanted to talk to her about this. I love these girls. I love these girls so much. And this picture right here, Celeste and Bella, those are my life. I helped make those kids. There's nothing in my life that means more to me than these kids. Nothing. Kids, that's, that's your life. That's your lifeline. That's everything. Like, you make kids, they come first before anything. Kids, spouse, family. That's what it's always been. Nothing you've told me tonight makes sense. Nothing you've told me tonight feels like the truth. Can we start over? Dude, if you were innocent and a detective was like basically implying that you killed your wife and your kids, would you or would you not like freak out and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You need to find a real motherfucker person that did. Like, would you not freak out on him? Like, I would be fucking very, very, very upset that he would even imply that I did some shit like that. So the fact that this dude is like, you know he's fucking lying, man. Like, you know he's lying. This shit is crazy, bro. So crazy. Sure. Tonight's been pretty intense. I can imagine. How are you feeling? <laughs> I've, I've slept like two hours last night, so I'm like running on empty right now, but I know. I can see it. So why don't I do this? I'm sure you don't mind if we take a break for the night. Um, and I'm sure that you are um, feeling some of the pressure from me. Okay.
I'm going to commit to you that we're not going to stop working until we find them. Okay. Okay. And I want to commit to you that there is going to come a time when you're going to feel this pressure from other people. I'm not the only one who thinks that there's a possibility you have something to do with this. Like another FBI agent, like pressure, or like this, like everyone. Okay. Everyone, Chris. Okay. The interrogator is clearly receptive to Chris's anxiety and endeavors to amplify this emotion before ending the interview. He wants to inflate Chris's apprehension as much as possible for the looming polygraph test that approaches the following day. Tonight when you go home, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to pass out because you're so tired, okay? And that's probably not going to be what happens. Your head's going to go race, okay? So tonight when you lay down, and your head starts racing, there's going to be things that come to your mind, okay? This always happens. Always. It's very natural. You're going to say, I wonder why he asked me that, okay? You're going to say, screw him. How dare he accuse me, okay? You're going to say, I wonder if they thought of this, okay? And then you're going to say, I probably should have told him something or this or that, okay? Those are the most common things. Um, when those thoughts come to your head, I want you to call me. Those are beautiful kids. Those kids have a good dad, and I know it. I just see a picture of them on phone. Yeah. It's a better one, but it's just, I'm sorry to, it's those kids have a good dad. The following discourse from the officer could be construed as the reframing technique, where an interrogator will try and shift the suspect's view of themselves from negative to positive as a means to lightening the iniquity of their crimes and increasing the chances of a confession. However, this is more likely what is known as passive accusation, where the interrogator is almost certain of the suspect's guilt and indirectly accuses and in some manner indignifies the suspect. This is made evident by the high praises the officer gives to Chris for extremely trivial deeds. A lot of dads don't get second pairs of clothes and cook eggs and give them snacks at night. You know, a lot of, a lot of men, that's woman's work, right? I uh, like to get involved. But you're not that kind of guy. Okay. So can we say that tomorrow at 11 o'clock? Sure. We can do a polygraph? Sure. Here. Um, I appreciate you coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Give me a few minutes. Um, this is Tammy. Did you meet Tammy yesterday? No, I'm good. All I always Tammy. Hi, Chris. How are you? Is it on this? Yep, I know. It's, I'll explain what that is here in a little bit, yeah. but you don't have to worry. It, it's not on or anything right now. It's not gonna. It's not gonna buzz you or anything. <laughs> Obviously, you're probably nervous about taking today's test. Honestly, I would think something is wrong with you if you weren't nervous about coming no. in here to take a polygraph. No. Even if people are like, I don't have anything to hide. It is. Obviously, we know that this guy is guilty, but like. Let's just say an innocent person did this polygraph and they failed. Like, they're already nervous, you know? Like, you're already scared. Like, you know, even if you know you're innocent, you're like, oh, my God. What if I, like, fail somehow? Like, what if I'm so nervous that I fail and that makes you nervous and you just overreact to every question? I get they do these easy questions like they ask you what's your name or when's your birthday or are you sitting down right now? Uh, like, is your skin color black? Whatever, like... But still, those are still, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe you guys in the comments know, like, yeah, they are pretty accurate. I'm assuming they're accurate because they wouldn't use them if they weren't. But at the same time, it's definitely flaws in it. They're racking. Oh, yeah. And I have taken tons of polygraphs, obviously, in my training. Um, I went to 10 weeks for training. I've been a polygrapher about, for about five years. Um, I went to the best school in the country. So I want you to have confidence in the fact that if you had nothing to do with this disappearance, like we're going to find that out today, okay? I have the best training that they offer in the United States. Um, I, we use the most validated testing. Um, that was the way I'm going to ask you the question. So believe me, if you had nothing to do with this, I will be able to show them that today. This is psychological pressure disguised as reassurance. It's not a routine procedure during the pre-test phase of a polygraph exam, yet this technique will be used when the suspect's guilt is almost conclusive. Polygraphs are not a foolproof system, and they can be beaten, but with a heightened state of anxiety, it becomes considerably more challenging and unlikely. On this occasion, the polygrapher distinctly applies this technique for maximal effect. There's actually only two ways you can fail a polygraph, okay? The first way would be if you fail to follow my instructions. 
I'm going to give you a lot of instructions today about how to sit still, how to answer questions, things like that. So if you fail to follow those instructions, you will not pass today's test, okay? Right. The second way would be if you choose to lie to me today. You know, if you did have something to do with their disappearance, um, it would be really stupid for you to come in and take a polygraph today. Exactly. Right? Like, it would be really dumb. Like, you should not be here right now sitting in this chair if you had anything to do with Shanann mm -hmm. and the little girl's disappearance, okay? Well, yeah, we just, everything flourished from there. Like, in 2011, I, pr I proposed to her over in Ocean Isle Beach. <laughs> yeah, it was, and she was just sitting there crying with a little fiction notice, and she had on, she yeah, she recorded it. It was really it was an amazing day to see that. And then she left. She was she was I was there. Like she had a midwife for this one, so like they actually had me like, oh, you can stand here and like you know catch her and like but but Celeste came out like so fast that like I barely had a chance to go like this, and they moved me out of the way. She just like came out. The polygrapher will also obtain the examinee's version of the facts regarding the specific issues under investigation. I was just hoping that I would get that knock on the door or a phone call or a text. I mean, her phone, I mean, they have her phone. Like, hopefully, maybe it's a number I don't know. Hopefully, it's like, you know, like a burner, a burner phone or some, some, kind of, some kind of, like, phone she bought. And she could just text me and call me like, hey, I'm okay. Something. Or just get a knock on the door and then the kids just run in. I miss like the kids like sitting at the dinner table and like having to tell them to eat their dinner and like I miss them throwing their chicken nuggets at me like I was I just want to find them I want them to come home safe like wherever they are I hope they are safe and I really I really hope they can just come home it makes me feel like all right maybe somebody has her that's not that's not keeping her safe or something terrible has happened. And that is, that's the nightmare. And what would that terrible thing be? If somebody hurt them. Chris recounts a brief summary of the events and states multiple vague possibilities for his family's disappearance. The polygrapher then starts to elect specific timelines for Chris to give his account on. Um, you said the next thing you know is her getting into bed with you, is that right? I could not felt her getting bed. We didn't say anything because I just, I just kind of felt it. Okay. Do you know if she was on her phone or like how any of that works? I don't, I don't think she was on her phone. Was she mad at all? I mean, being crying, crying like she was, crying like I was. I mean, yeah. I mean, she was upset, but I mean, it was it was, it comes with that kind of conversation. In the next moments, you will see another subterfuge of psychological pressure, this time disguised as routine questioning procedure. It's a vastly open-ended question relevant to the crimes under suspicion. These types of questions are common knowledge and easily clarified by the innocent, while the guilty will in most cases have severe difficulty in responding. I know it's totally awful to think about, but what are ways, because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, what are ways that you can make someone disappear? I mean, like, if you're talking about, like, what I've seen, like, on the movies, or, like, how you, like, how people, uh, if you read about other people, I mean, you hire somebody. Like a hitman? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. I'm just being honest. No, but that's what I want. That's what I want, because I want you to go through all of these scenarios in your head, because I want you to know for sure what I'm talking about when I say that, you know, asking you if you physically caused her disappearance. Okay, like, like you'd hire somebody, or you'd have a somebody you know that that would do it I mean it's like I don't I mean it's hard and it's a hard I question to answer and I know there's stuff it's a hard but, question to answer right because uh, I didn't I didn't have nothing to do with this disappearance right. but like I don't even want to think about like if I, if, if you're asking like how I would do it like no I anyone like anyone how would how it. would anyone cause someone else's disappearance I mean you would like you because of someone's disappearance by murdering them. Yes. Would you agree with that? Yes. So what different physical ways could you cause someone's disappearance through murder? You could stab someone, Stab right? someone, shoot someone, hit them with a blunt object. Um, also there, I mean, I use a weapon, like a gun or a knife. I mean, okay. you could... Do 
you can smother someone. Smother someone. You can strangle someone. Hang someone. I mean, yeah, you can. All that kind of things. I mean, it's hard to even think about that kind of stuff right now. Mm -hmm. So you can strangle someone. You could drown someone. Yeah. You could shock someone to death. Um, you could burn someone alive. Um, what are the ways you can think of? As far as like, like lure them into a trap, I guess. So what do you mean? What? Like you know, like have somebody waiting like around the corner and like you know, I even sure. Uh, oh. They're in a coma. Sure. Um. So if I ask you that question on the test, Chris, are you going to have any issue with that? About you like, physically causing like going through every single one of those? Yeah, like that would be a way okay. you could cause someone's disappearance. Okay, uh, no, I, I can definitely like I can pass. I mean, I or you could murder them, you could kidnap them, you could take them to another country, you could, you know, bury them in your backyard. You could, yeah. you could do a million things. Yeah. As far as um, trying to conceal them. Hey guys, I was just thinking about something as this video is playing. This is like some like this is a video that you will watch at night time. So let me know if you want if you guys want me to w drop part three like at eight o'clock or nine thirty, because I'm probably gonna post this video around the same time I post the last one like at one or three or something like that. Make sure you guys turn on post notifications so whenever I post it that you are always you know up to date. But yeah, so um. Just let me know what you guys want me to, what time you want me to post, because this gives me late night vibes, you know? So, just let me know. Yeah. Right? So that no one can find them? Yes. Because at, at this point, she's gone. So when I ask you the question on the test, I'm not asking you about guilt. I'm not asking you about, did you make her feel so horrible that she ended up leaving? I'm saying that you were the one that physically caused her to disappear. Okay. Either by murder, kidnapping, you know, all of those other things okay. that we went through, okay? You want me to list you want me to list all those? Like No, no, no. Oh, You're okay. just gonna say no to that question. Okay. Right? When I ask you if you physically caused Shanann's disappearance, okay. your answer should be what? No. Right. So do you have any issues with that at all? And no. have any question about what I would mean when I was No, that's, that's asking totally that like I just like going through all those that um, <laughs> that's right. a lot to really think about. Right. Like but trying to figure out like I, yeah. Those. I'm going to have you take a bath and break. Thank We've you. been in here quite a while. So you're going to be taking what's called a directed lie polygraph. So what that means is there are going to be test questions on the test where I want you to lie. I know it seems kind of weird, but you're going to know which questions these are and they're going to be easy to answer. They're all going to start with before 2018. The directed lie test has three types of questions. Known truth questions. These are easy questions to Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. This happened in t 2018 or later? Like, I know these CCTVs, and yeah, by the way, this is not, like, my shit that's like this. Like, look, I'm going to the quality is in 1080, so I have no clue why. Like, well, I don't know why it looks like that. This is the CCTV footage. I thought all of these videos were old as hell. This happened in 2018 or later. So, yikes. God damn, like, this shit looks old. This guy's on, this guy is sick, bro. This is sick. Answer, such as, are you sitting down? Or, are you wearing shoes? They serve two purposes. The first purpose is to provide a baseline reading for when the subject is telling the truth, and should elicit very little bodily responses. The second purpose is to disconnect the examinee's thought patterns between each question as a means for resetting their cerebration for a more accurate reading. Control questions. These are what the polygrapher just explained to Chris. Whenever she says, before 2018, at the start of a question, Chris will know he is purposely supposed to lie. Each of these questions are deliberately constructed that all answers will be responded with no. Relevant questions. These relate specifically to the crime being investigated, and the examinee will know that they are supposed to respond truthfully. A guilty subject will show a much stronger reaction to the relevant questions than to the control questions, even though they will be lying on both of them. This is due to the immediate threat posed by the relevant questions. So I'm going to say before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about and you're gonna say no because you're telling a lie awesome the test is about to begin please remain still did you write the number one no did you write the number three no 
Did you write the number five? No. This portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. Okay, you can relax. And feel. This is the last time the polygrapher will have any correspondence with Chris before the real test begins. She gives him an initial compliment in a reassuring tone. You did great! Yeah, was... You remembered to lie and everything. That was awesome. That was... <laughs> this momentary boost in his confidence is then abruptly ripped away as he receives the following information. So, <laughs> you obviously are a really bad liar. Have, have people told you that before? Like, the second mm -hmm. you tell a lie, like, they can tell, like, on your face that... Because the second you lied to the number three, like, I don't know if you heard me clicking, but I had, like, turned down the sensitivity because you're starting to go off the page. So that is what I need to see as a polygrapher because that tells me that you know it's wrong to tell a lie um, and you're actually having a significant reaction when you lie. So that is awesome. So thank you for being a wrong okay, liar. I, no, that's like a good them. thing. That's a good thing. We don't want to be good liars. So. Thank you for being a horrible liar. Um, and that just shows me that, you know, obviously on the test when they're asking, you know, significant stuff about your wife, um, if you're lying to that, it's going to be even 10 times more amplified. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much, more than you know. So that was awesome. And the coolest thing about this is right now, there's only one person in this room that knows what the truth is. And in about five minutes, there's going to be two of us. So. That's the coolest part, okay? And then I can go share that with them out there, okay? Okay. All right, you ready? Let's do it. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Do you understand I will only ask you the questions we have discussed? Yes. Regarding Shanann's disappearance, do you intend to answer all of the questions truthfully? Yes. Is your first name Christopher? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? No. Did you physically cause Shanann? Well, hold on, my trip, did she say before 2016? I swear I thought she said before 2018. Maybe I can't hear. Disappearance. No. Were you born in 1985? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shanann? No. Are you now in the state of Colorado? Yes. Before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to get even with them? No. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. This portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. All right, how'd you feel? Same? Yeah. All of it? I think it was the same through everything. Right. For you. I'll be And like, I know this might sound like hard to believe, but I genuinely do think that's like, I'm not saying this guy's a good person, but some people like some murderers, they're not all like psychopath bad people. Like, obviously, like they've made mistakes, but like a murder, that's a, a mistake. Sometimes, I don't know. But I definitely do believe that not every single person that has committed a murder, like, genuinely is a bad person. Like, if you listen to people's stories from prisons, some people's best friends was murderers. And, like, they just tell good stories about them. So you never really know. Obviously, this guy is a fucking loser. But some people do genuinely make mistakes. So, yeah, it's, it's fucked up that that had to be the mistake you made. But, yeah. So I brought Graham in here because we want to talk to you about the results, okay? Okay. So um, it is completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, he did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. Okay. 
Can I bro, this lady's posture is so bad. Bro, one thing about me, bro, you guys know that I'm 15. And, like, I'm so worried about my posture, bro, because it's so bad. It's really bad. And I think that in, like, 15 more years, I'm going to end up like this lady. And I do not want back problems. But then, like, it's not as simple as just, like, yeah, just don't lean. Like, just don't lean forward. But it's such a habit because I've been doing it since I was, like, really little. So it's so hard to, you know, it's just... I hope that doesn't happen to me. Talk about what actually happened. I feel like you're probably ready to do that. I didn't. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph. I promise, Chris. I, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna stop. I just stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. I I want you to take a deep breath right now. All right, man. That's the end of the video. If you guys made it this far, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. We just hit 3,000 subscribers recently. I just want to say thank you guys for that, man. I love you guys. The growth is crazy. And um, I got unlimited potential, man. You know? So who knows where I'm going to be a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, whatever. But right now, you guys are here right now. Once again, thank you guys so much. I love you guys. Let me know in the comments if I should post part three later and like at night like at eight o'clock or if i should post it during the daytime and um i see you guys soon man peace